Hey everybody, Prepper Nurse One here. Uh, today is July 31st. It's Monday, last day of July. Absolutely beautiful out today. It's actually kind of warm. It's like 86, 88 degrees here, but really sunny. Um, kicking butt on power today, which is a good thing. So, started out, uh, did a video, and I said I'm going to be doing Medical Mondays. So, I'm going to start that today, right now. And so, what I want to start with first, I looked at a lot of the responses. And so, I kind of want to go over, I'm going to go over one thing today. Um, and so, the reason I'm going to be doing the different things is I think they're more pertinent in, in, in an emergency situation, okay? So, the first thing that we're going to go over here, and I wrote, wrote down a bunch of notes, okay? We're going to go over hypothermia, okay? Um, obviously, hypothermia is a life-threatening condition that may lead to death. So, obviously, that's... Uh, you know, it's something that's really important. There's a big difference between, obviously, hyper and hypo. Hypothermia is dealing with the cold, okay? So, it's a, it's a deep core uh, temperature below 95 degrees. So, basically, your core temperature is um, lower than 95 degrees. Then, you once you're at that point, then you're going to have hypothermia, okay? Uh, so, it's 35 Celsius. It's below 35 Celsius. So uh, I would make sure for my European viewers, because it's like we always use Fahrenheit here in the States, and I know everybody else in the world uses Celsius. All right, a normal body temperature is uh, 97.7 to 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit, or 36.5 to 37.5 degrees Celsius. That's a normal body temperature. So once you get below that 95, then you're going to be dealing with hypothermia, okay? Um, your body's going to adjust depending on the weather conditions, you know, so that's, uh, that's, your body's going to fluctuate temperatures all the time. Uh, let's see. And basically the, uh, when you're into hypothermia, what the body's doing it is um, making sure it's working to keep your core temperature uh, at, at the normal range because it's vital to survival. you got to have those core temperatures working, okay? Uh, let's see. So, what we're going to talk about too is a, a couple of the symptoms when people have hypothermia or hypothermia. I'm sorry. Um, so, what, one of them is like you know when you have the bluish your hands, your lips, and stuff will get like blue, and because the blood is draining away from your extremities, pulling in to work on the inner core to keep that warm. Okay, that's part of it. Shivering, chattering teeth, you know, when you get that really, when you get cold like that. That is your body's way of trying to heat up the body. So actually you're going to produce two to four times more energy by shivering. So your body is trying to regulate the temperature of your body to try to keep you warm and keep you alive. Okay. And so, uh, let's see. Yeah, and one of the other things that happens when you have uh, hypothermia is you're going to have some mental confusion, uh, poor decision making. Uh, people do a lot of crazy stuff when they're into hypothermia. Like uh, I've I've seen I've seen it myself, but it was alcohol related. But uh, <laughs> but that's another thing. Now, hi alcohol will intensify the effect of um, hypothermia. It doesn't actually when people have something to drink and they think it's warming up. It's really not doing that. It's actually kicking the heat off your body more, okay? And a lot of times when people are drinking, they're out in the cold, they're going to have more confusion. And so what happens is a lot of people start taking their clothes off thinking that they're hot, which actually is not going to help. It's actually going to be the complete opposite effect. It's going to intensify the effects of hypothermia and you're going to die faster, okay? So um, now there's, you know, there's mild hypothermia, moderate, severe, or profound, obviously. So, you know, basically when you're having a mild hypothermia, you, you know, you start seeing your fingertips are getting white and, uh, you know, the blood is going away, bluish in the lips and stuff like that. that. That's the beginning signs of it, you know, and then you start, you know, your body starts really getting cold and that's when you start to shiver, you know, so there's more of your moderate and, uh, you know, then, like, once you get to that point of the mental confusion and, and uh, you know, to that point, now you're really in trouble, okay? So, obviously, the biggest thing you want to do is if you start getting the warning signs, and basically the warning signs are, you know, your fingertips are, are going white or blue, basically, or your lips are bluish, you know, you start to shiver, your teeth are chattering, 
you want to get inside and get warm, okay? But, um, and obviously it's associated with frostbite too, because your blood is leaving the extremities to warm up the core, and that's why people end up getting frostbite in, like, losing fingers or toes and stuff like that, okay? Uh, let's see. So, went over all that. Okay, so basically, once you start going through those different things of hypothermia, you know, like the bluing of the lips, the blood leaving your fingertips, so your fingertips like look like they're white, and your, your toes, your extremities, that is going toward, or towards the core, the shivering, the mental confusion, what that eventually leads to is you la lance, uh, blah, if I could speak, you slowly lapse into a state of unconsciousness, and then you die. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, then you're not cold anymore. You know, you get to that point where all, you're not cold anymore. And that, that's when you were in serious, serious trouble, okay? Um, just because you're cold or your teeth are chattering does not necessarily mean that you are experiencing hypothermia, okay? Uh, only a core body temperature below 95 is hypothermia. Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to tell. Those are, your, like I said, those are your early warning signs that you need to do something, and you need to do something really fast because your core body temperature is dropping, okay? So let's talk about um, some of the stuff that's going to cause hypothermia. We're going to talk about, you know, basically your exposure to very low temperatures. Alcohol use during exposure to low temperatures, again, we talked about that a little bit. Uh, poor clothing, not having enough clothing on, not layered up in, you know, dressing for the weather conditions. Trauma. So now what would trauma be? Uh, a lot of blood loss, you had an injury, you got a cut, or, you know, um, a loss of fluids. So you're um, dehydrated on top of everything else. You're going to be more susceptible to hypothermia at that point, okay? Swimming or diving into cold water. So if you've ever done that, I think all of us probably have, you jump into that pool and it's a lot colder than you thought and it's like a shock to the system, okay? Um, now heat loss through the head that's where you're going to lose your most heat out of your body is through your head. Now, as a bald guy who hardly ever wears a hat, even in the wintertime, the heat definitely leaves your head first, okay? Um, but, um, and you're going to experience more heat loss in the water, excuse me, than you are on land. For whatever reason, if you are in that cold water, it just sucks that heat out of you that much faster than actually just being on land and being cold that way. Okay, so... Um, so who is more susceptible to hypothermia? Your elderly people are definitely going to be more susceptible to hypothermia, okay? Uh, they're more fragile. They have a lower body fat concentrate. And, uh, you know, and uh, let's see. And it's like they have a history of more, generally have a history of more cardiac problems. So that's going to lead to it too. So you're basically talking your old people are going to have those issues because of the fact that, you know, they're frail, obviously. Um, generally, they don't have a lot of body mass or fat on their body anymore. So that makes a big difference in, obviously, heart issues. Now, another group of people that's more susceptible to hypothermia are small kids. Small kids have a big head and a small body. And where did we say we lose most of our body heat? It's through our head. So, you know, that's, uh, that's going to be... A big thing. So when your kids are going outside, you make sure they're covering up their head. I mean, that's really, really important. Make sure they have a you know a nice yarn hat on or whatever if it's winter time. All right. Um, again, we talked about if people are confused. Once they get to that state of confusion, a lot of times they'll start to remove their clothing. Again, it's real dangerous because that's a really bad sign. And when I said I had a buddy of mine do that, alcohol related, we were out. It was winter time. You know, we were bundled up because of that, and we were drinking. And uh, he didn't have a really good tolerance for alcohol, and he started acting all foolish and stupid and started stripping off his clothes. And it's like you know we had to get control of him because you know obviously we didn't want him to die. So that that was that was bad. Um, let's see. So okay, so you know, for treating hypothermia now, there's a lot of different ways medically that they treat hypothermia. So basically, I'm just going to go over. Obviously, we may not be able to get to medical treatment, okay? So if we're out in it's a disaster time of period, somebody has hypothermia, biggest thing to do, if their clothes are wet, get them out of their wet clothes. That's number one, okay? Uh, a warm, dry blanket, wrap that warm, dry blanket around them. Another thing that you can actually do is you can use your own body heat 
to help bring their core temperature up by just snuggling up next to them, you know, using your own body heat, okay? Um, one of the things you don't want to do, you don't want to rub them. That's not going to help, okay? And uh, you don't want to use any dry heat um, on them. So, you know, you want to bring their temperature back up slowly, okay? So you just want to slowly work in getting their temperature back up and getting them to the point where uh, you can, you know, they can be back to being normal, hopefully, and, and don't, don't have frostbite and loosen appendages. So, uh, basically... Normally what they do as far as if you're going to go like into a hospital, they're going to go warm IV, IV fluids, um, warm humidified air, um, they're going to do uh, blood warmer, you know, they can obviously use bl uh, warm blankets. So those are some of the things that they can do. Uh, let's see, like I said, if you are, feel like you're getting any of these symptoms of hypothermia, the best thing to do obviously guys is get inside as quickly as possible. I mean, because you don't want to get to that point where it's going to be dangerous. So um, I want to go over that first because, you know, I'm in the Northeast. We deal with winter a lot, so we deal with a lot of cold temperatures. And so it's something that we really got to be on top of all the time. And, you know, it's like my, my biggest thing is like, you know, with the kids, make sure you have a hat on. Make sure you have warm gloves. You know, um, you're layered up. Those are really, really important things. So... That's what I wanted to talk about today. So here is the obviously the first, or well, yes, last week was the first episode. This is the first actual episode of actually, you know, talking about something. So I will do hyperthermia as well, okay? And uh, I, I'm going to actually go into some other things as well. But I wanted to start out with this, with uh, the hypothermia, and just so to explain it, know what to look for. It's really good information to have, guys. It really is. Um, please like, comment, share, and, uh, you know, share that information with whoever you want. Write it down, you know, um, looking for signs and symptoms. It can save your life. It really, really can. And, you know, just try to be smart out there. You know, don't put yourself in a situation that's going to be dangerous. And uh, But anyway, let me know what your thoughts are on the video. I definitely would like your feedback. And so anyway, guys, again, at the end of my videos, I always say the same thing. So I want to make sure that I say it. Remember, hug and kiss the ones you love. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. We never know what's going to happen. Accidents happen all the time. Loss of life happens all the time. So to let the people that you love and that you care about know how you feel, it's really, really important, okay? And uh, remember, it's STD, guys. It's one step at a time, one thing at a time, one day at a time. Whatever you're trying to pursue, whatever you're trying to do, you can do it as long as you work at it methodically. You really can. Um, the only one that's going to stop you is you. Okay, so anyway, I will get off of here for now, and I will talk to you all tomorrow. I hope you all are having a good start to your week. All right, Prepper Nurse went out for now.